Hey everyone, I'm Matt. Welcome back to another video. Today is a different video. We're on the golf cart again, so we're doing golf cart talk. And in this video, I am telling you guys five things that an RV salesperson won't tell you. This is gonna be a good video, and let me tell you something. It's in no particular order, and I think all five things have equal importance. Let's dive into the video. So here's my question to everybody. What does this Fleetwood, this Coachman Leprechaun, this Thor Access, this custom horse RV, Alpine Montana Cyclone, okay, what do these RVs all have in common? We got Raptors, Alliances, look at this, we got Integras, Accolades, these are $300,000, these are $100,000. Holiday Rambler, Nauticas, those are two or three hundred thousand dollars. And then look at this, we got some Class Bs, some Winnebago's. Look at all these units. What is the one thing that they all have in common? The answer is they're all in the service department, guys. It doesn't matter what brand you buy. It doesn't matter what price level you're spending your money at. Your RV is going to break down on you, new or used. It's an RV and it happens. Every time you hit a bump in the road, it's like your whole house is going through an earthquake during a hurricane. A lot of times customers come into the dealership and they say, well, I just want an RV that's not gonna give me any problems. Unfortunately, that's not the reality of any RV. The one example that I like to give to everybody is, when I was at the Tampa RV show talking to the Featherlight manufacturer, for those of you who don't watch Andrew Steele, Featherlight is a manufacturer of Prevost motorhomes um, that cost $2 million. Even they were talking about their service department because with all RVs, it's not if something goes wrong, it's when something goes wrong. Speaking of Andrew Steele, make sure you guys check out his channel if you like to tour big, expensive, $500,000, million, $2 million motorhomes. He's almost had 100,000 subscribers, so make sure you check out my good friend, Andrew Steele. So number two is gonna be something called sister products. So a lot of times you're gonna hear a salesperson say, hang on a second, let's go over here. You're gonna hear a salesperson say, oh man, I would not buy that Wildwood. I would buy this Salem Cruise Light or if you're looking at fifth wheels, hey guys, I would not buy a big horn, I'd buy this big country. Or in some cases, for a case that we have at General RV, it's, hey, I would never buy a Jayco Precept, I would never buy this Jayco Motorhome, you're gonna want an Integra Motorhome. Let me tell you guys something, folks. Those are called sister products, okay? So going back to the first one, that Salem is made by Forest River and the Wildwood is made by Forest River. They have the same look, the same floor plans, the same price point. They're made on the same assembly line. They even have the same parent company of Forest River, okay? Heartland does the same thing with their big horn and their big country. And then some manufacturers do the same thing, but a little different. For an example, Jayco owns Integra. So Jayco sells the Precept and Integra sells the Vision XL. Both of them are 34 Gs. They both have the same options and everything. But in that situation, the manufacturers are a little different. Same warranty and same everything else. Now with that said, sometimes sister products do look a little different. For an example, a Keystone Passport is going to have a complete different look from a Keystone Bullet, but the core principles are still there. They're called sister products. Funny story about sister products, I say the RV industry is a lot like the fashion industry. So when I first came into the RV industry, there was this fifth wheel called the Heartland Oakmont, which was selling horribly. People weren't buying it, people didn't like it or nothing okay you guys ready for this so they the manufacturers gave us significant rebates to move all the oakmonts off the dealership lot 
At the time, their top seller was called the Bighorn, okay? And so once all the dealerships across the country got rid of the Heartland Oakmont, they peeled the sticker off, kept all the floor plans the exact same, and rebranded it to call it the Bighorn Travelers, okay? Because the Bighorn was such a popular seller, and so they rebranded it to the Bighorn Travelers, and now that's one of their best-selling fifth wheels on the market. Final point to make about sister products, not all RVs are the same, okay? Here's what I mean. There's the Solitude and then the Solitude S-Class. There's the Bighorn and the Bighorn Travelers, the Montana and the Montana High Country. If you have a Montana High Country, that's a great unit, but it is not a Montana. It's not to be confused. And then a lot of times, so for Keystone, they have the Montana and the Montana High Country. The sister products is the Alpine and the Avalanche. Oh. So sometimes when it's a very popular brand, they will do that play on words, Montana, Montana High Country. And when it's not a super popular brand, AKA Alpine, they will have the lower brand of something of similar similar theming avalanche alpine mountain stuff like that not saying that any of those units aren't good units at all they're all fantastic units but there is differences between the montana high country alpine or the montana high country avalanche and the regular montana and alpine so number three this one's a tough one and this one hits home and and this one this one's not the fun one but number three is you're gonna die okay so i say that very bluntly but the whole point is don't miss out on today worrying about tomorrow everybody asks me when is the best time to buy an rv when is the best time to buy should i buy at the show i'm gonna wait six months till the market gets better every excuse in the book when's the best time to buy an rv listen guys there is there is no best time to buy an rv the best time to buy an rv is today because tomorrow is never promised now listen i know this is coming from an rv salesperson and i'm trying to sell you guys an rv today every day my goal is to try to sell you an rv so i want you to take that into context but I want to give you guys two examples. One's going to be a personal example, and one is going to be an actual excerpt that me and Will found on one of the Facebook groups that we're, we're a member of. So it's not going to be words from us. It's going to be words from somebody that we don't know, and for privacy reasons, we're going to leave their name blocked out. But I want you guys to think of these two situations. Personally, on a personal note, my dad had one of the crummiest jobs in my opinion in the whole world he was a transmission mechanic for metro in washington dc what he did every day was built transmissions so what i mean is week in and week out he built transmissions for the buses and my personality type i would absolutely hate that job he did that job for 30 years and he didn't make good money. I mean, he, he made he made money for us to grow up, but we, we, we did not have extra things. And he retired from Metro, and then six months later, he passed away. And I tell everybody that story because he worked his whole life. He sacrificed a lot of joys that he wanted, and he worked his whole butt off for 30 years to not be able to enjoy a single day of retirement. And then I have this message here from Facebook from somebody else who had a similar type of story that they've been, let, 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 me, read you, let me read you what they said. In quotes, my wife and I started following Alliance over a year ago and have enjoyed the Alliance story and progress that they have made. We were extremely impressed by the customer service and the units. The staff at Alliance and the people on site have provided us with information 
needed, provided us with the information needed to decide that Alliance was the way to go. Unfortunately, due to recent changes in our lives, this will no longer be happening. Thank you all for letting us be a part of the group. Happy adventures to all. In honors of my wife, May, I'm gonna leave the name out, May 21st of 2021. So, you know, seeing this post really, really hits hard for anybody. And we went back uh, in the group to see how long they were a part of the Facebook group and they were apart for over a year. So, and, and we see this a lot in the RV industry, people that they're spending six months, a year, two years, three years researching, trying to find the right RV, making, making all these plans and that they're, they're not going out there camping. Now, listen, I know a lot of you, a lot of people are gonna say, well, listen, you gotta do your research. You gotta make sure that you don't buy the wrong RV or this is a, a very expensive purchase that people have to, you know, and I get that, trust me, I get that. But at the same time, don't miss out on tomorrow worrying about today. You know, the fact of the matter is, you know, just go camping, go out and make memories. There isn't a perfect RV out there. You can spend, listen, I've seen more RVs than every single one of you guys put together. It's what I do for a living. And in part of what makes my channel beautiful is it doesn't matter how expensive the RV is, I can find you three things that I don't like about every single RV on this lot. So I get it, it's a lot of money. And, and you're planning for retirement and this and that. But at the same time, maybe not buy a new one, maybe buy a used one, maybe not buy that motorhome, maybe buy a travel trailer. Find something and make memories. You know, the one thing that I like to tell everybody is, these are horrible investments. Uh, mathematically, financially, it's a, it's a horrible asset. Ask, ask any accountant. But the one thing that you're paying for is the memories, the going out camping, the visiting nature, the spending time with your family that you will never be able to spend again. So that's something that, you know, you can look at it in different ways, but you know, I feel like it's a powerful statement. And let's move on to number four. So number four is RV life isn't for everybody. Let me tell you. And listen, this is coming from a guy who's trying to sell absolutely everybody. The one thing you gotta remember is, when you're in an RV, even the biggest ones, fifth wheels are gonna give you the biggest square footage out of all of them. When you are with your partner, your spouse, your children, you are in close quarters and you better love each other. Um, I've seen RVers that have decided to get an RV and it has caused them to get a divorce. On the flip side, there is other RVers, like my friends John and Mercedes from the RV Odd Couple. They were on the brinks of divorce and the experience has actually brought them back together and now they are closer than ever. So there's two flip sides to that. Just know that the way they're constructed, the walls are super thin, and you are parked right next to your neighbor. So here we are screaming, hey, screw you, no, screw you. And then you go outside to have a beer with your neighbor and <laughs> they heard the whole argument. And that is a quote from one of my customers that I met in Virginia. How's it going? Uh, they're enjoying their new motorhome. But they, when she said that, I was writing that down word for word. And she said it in a little different way than what I um, said on this video. But it is 100% true. When you're in an RV, you have no privacy anymore. Everybody can hear everything. Um, and just, just know that and know that there is no separation when when the reality comes and you get into an argument with your spouse, you know, you're in very, very close quarters. Great, number five, and this might be the biggest thing that an RV salesperson 
won't tell you. RVs are not made to be lived in. Whoa, hang on a second. What did he just say? An RV stands for recreational vehicle. Recreationally, you're supposed to be using this recreationally. You are not supposed to be living in it. With that said, a ton of people live in them. People live in fifth wheels, in motorhomes, and travel trailers. There's a few people that live in teardrops, class Bs, hashtag van life, and even pop-ups, okay? I am not saying don't live in it, and I'm not saying that people don't live in it. I think it's like 300,000 people live in their RVs, which is awesome. And listen, when Andrea's kids are outside of the house, we're gonna live in an RV. With that said, RVs are not designed to be lived in. Now I know a couple people are gonna say, well, hey, the DRVs, they are designed to be lived in. Okay, that's $200,000 fifth wheel. But even still, I said this earlier with subject number one. These are homes on wheels. And every time you are driving your home, uh, you're going through an earthquake during a hurricane. And then not only that, these are not built like homes. They do not have the foundation like homes and they do not have the quality of homes. If you want an RV that has the quality of a home, it's gonna cost you three, four hundred thousand dollars for a towable. Don't even get me started on the motorhomes. And again, going back to subject number two, even then there's going to be issues. There will always be issues. The one thing I wanna tell everybody is, yes, go out and live in an RV, it's, it's awesome. It's, it's so cool, you know, houses are so expensive now, everybody's selling their house, and buying an RV for 50, 60, 70, $100,000 and traveling the world and living life to the fullest. Just know, you're always gonna wanna have a little, just know that it's, it's crazy. You have to plan your trips, but know that your trips will never be, go as planned know that you will always somehow some way end up in a service department and know that if you're full timing you might have to stay with your friends for a week or two or maybe even a month you might have to stay at an extended stay hotel for a week or two or maybe a month when you decide to full time in an rv there is so many awesome features and benefits but equally on the flip side it's not all rainbows and butterflies there is going to be issues that you run into and there is going to be times that you're going to be homeless because your rv's in the service department and the manufacturers are taking two weeks three weeks a month to get your parts for your slide out and the rv service department is a month or two on back order and you know listen every service department is trying their best every single one the worst dealership in the world i am telling you every service department is trying their best it's just with so much of everything and with the volatility of these rvs you know that's that there's always going to be backup and i'm not saying that to scare everybody what i'm saying that is to be aware set the expectations and know that RVs, they're not going to be fun and easy, and a successful RV trip is a trip where you only have one or two or three issues. Be handy or be friendly. You know, be handy, either know how to fix stuff yourself or be friendly at the campground and meet people who know how to fix stuff yourself. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's the only thing to do. Great, so those are the five things that an RV salesperson will never tell you. And again, I'm not saying this to scare you. I'm saying this to set the right expectation so you guys know what awesome community it, it is to be an RVer. You know, they're not cheap. You know, what I like to tell everybody is, 
RVs, they're not fast, but they're fun. They're not cheap, but they are convenient. It's an awesome lifestyle. It's a great way to travel to see this country, and it's a great way to meet new people along the roads. I've sold probably over a thousand RVs in my lifetime, and what I can tell you is, there's probably only a handful of customers that I didn't like, and they didn't like me, and it doesn't mean we're bad people. We just didn't see eye to eye. The, the point of that is, 99.95% of RVers are awesome people. It is a great community. I'm so glad that I fell into it and I found the RV community or the RV community found me. It's the best lifestyle and it is going to be the best decision for most of you guys to make. Just know that, you know, with a great time, it's not all rainbows and butterflies. There is gonna be some adversities there, but that's what makes that's what makes the adventures, you know? A lot of times people say in RV life, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Well, I think it's it's all in one. The destination, the journey getting there, and the memories that you're gonna make is all what makes the RV industry great. Thanks guys so much for watching. If you're brand new to my channel, uh, if you like to see RV reviews, make sure you subscribe to my channel. This channel is Matt's RV Reviews, where my wife and I do motorhome reviews. And subscribe to my ch second channel, Matt's RV Reviews Towables, where me and Will, we review travel trailers, fifth wheels, and toy haulers. If you guys have any questions about anything, check out my website, mattsrvreviews.com. And if you are in the market for an RV, the dealership that I work for is General RV Center. We will have a link to them down below so you can see what inventory we have. Thank you guys, absolutely everybody so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow with a brand new RV review.